And in Deuteronomy chapter 23, there's a lot of statements here. And we're not going to go through all of them by any means. There's a few that I really want to focus on for the sermon this morning. That unfortunately, many people, many pastors are avoiding because it's going to make people maybe leave their church if you actually do preach on it. It's going to convict people. It's going to, you know, do what the Bible, do what God's word is supposed to do. It's going to divide. And that's the way it is. But see, we're not called to withhold God's word. We're called to preach all of the counsel of God. So that's what we're going to do this morning. Now, hopefully your heart is right. You love God. You love God's word. And whatever is taught, as long as what I'm saying is lining up with scripture, is lining up with what the Bible actually says, then hopefully you'll be able to receive this message because in today's day and age, this stuff isn't popular. This is, this is something that people will say, oh, wow, you're crazy. You know, people want to have this real shallow Christianity where they get to pick and choose certain parts of the Bible they like and just kind of hold to that and ignore the rest. And we're not going to ignore the rest. Amen. We need to know everything. Now, one of the reasons, one of, what, what, the title of my sermon this morning is Virginity, Fornication, and bastards. Now, before you get all upset because I said the word bastard, if you didn't notice when we're reading God's word, it talks about bastards in God's word. Okay. Now the Bible, God's word is holy. It's pure. Every word of God is pure. Now we don't want to just go around and misuse words. But at the same time, there's nothing profane. There's no profanity found in God's word. You know, people have a, have a, have a mixed up notion sometimes of what words are swear words or bad words. Now, look, I'm not for going around and using a bunch of four letter words and stuff. I think it makes you look like ignorant fool. I don't think any people are going to treat you seriously when you talk to them. If you go around using a bunch of filthy language that, that you ought not to be speaking anyways. But to call a word that's a Bible word filthy is just completely false because now you're now you're judging God when he uses, you know, what he uses in his word. For example, one time I was out soul winning and, you know, the person didn't really want me to say that multiple times, not just one time. The person didn't want me to say the word hell in front of their kid or in front of their child, right? Because they think it's like a swear word. Well, you know how many times hell is found in the Bible? No, it's not a swear word. It's not a curse word. It's, I mean, there is a curse to it. I mean, hell is a curse, right? But it's not a bad word. It's not something we shouldn't be saying with our mouth because it's inherently wrong or evil. It's a word actually that needs to be used a lot more often because people need to understand that their hell is a real place. Well, bastard is another one of those words. It's not something that, you know, in today's society, it seems to have turned into like this swear word. Now, is there a negative connotation associated with that word? Absolutely. Do people sometimes maybe misuse that word? Sure. They probably do. But you know what? There's a good reason why it still has a negative connotation because it is negative. Because a bastard is a person, it's a child who's born out of wedlock. When, when a couple decides to fornicate, when, when a man and woman get together and they fornicate and they're not married and they have a child and they're still not married and that child is an illegitimate child, that is a bastard. That's what a bastard is. Now what I want to point out here in Deuteronomy 23, verse number 2, the Bible says, A bastard shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord, even to his tenth generation shall he not enter into the congregation of the Lord. Now when you read the Bible and you go, wow, that seems harsh. Pay attention to that. Because that means that your concept of right and wrong is screwed up. And the reason why it's screwed up is because this society has been programming you into thinking certain things are acceptable. So when you look at this and say, wow, I mean, how can it be that, that a bastard is not going to be allowed in the congregation of the Lord for 10 generations? I mean, that's a long, 10 generations is a long time. That's hundreds of years for 10 generations to go by and say, nope, the bastard is not going to be allowed in the, in the congregation of the Lord. It's a big deal to God for there to be children born out of wedlock. Now, in today's American culture, 
it's, it's, it's acceptable. It's practically promoted. With all the, the fornication that's going on, the fornication that's being pumped into your mind through the wicked Hollywood movies and the music and everything else, just promoting a promiscuous lifestyle, promoting just, oh, you get pregnant? Well, you can either kill the child or just go ahead and have it, but don't worry about getting married. Just empowering single women. Yeah, you go, girl. Just have your baby. You don't need that man. You know, and this, this, this distorted, wicked, satanic lifestyle and, and mindset that's being programmed into people to where now, you, you know, even Christians are going to read God's word and say, wow. Wow, why would you do that? Why? Because we're supposed to be holy. Because marriage is something that's supposed to be exalted and upheld extremely high. It's supposed to be held in very high regard. That's why God did not just allow for divorce under every, every circumstance, like the Pharisees were trying to get Jesus to say. Well, can a man divorce his wife for any reason? Uh, no, 